undisputed king of beers. This bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. The chairman is Robert Lee. Supervisor is the first vice president of the IBF, Jim Rondo. Along with the California State Athletic Commission, the chairman, William Eastman, commissioners in attendance, Jerry Nathanson and Carlos Palomino. Introducing to you the executive director, Richard DeCure. Presenting to you the judges as appointed for this world title main event at ringside, we have Gwen Adair, Dave Nelson, and Fritz Werner. Presenting to you the referee in charge of this bout, he will be giving instructions after the introductions, Dr. James Jenkin. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, the IBF Super Flyweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing blue trunks with white trim, fighting out of and representing Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico. He weighed in at a ready 114 pounds with a record of 17 wins, nine losses, and two draws. He has eight wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the number 11 IBF super flyweight contender. Introducing the challenger, Jorge Luis Roman. And his opponent across the ring. On my left is the defending champion fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with blue trim. He hails from Guaymas, Sonora, Mexico. His weight, a ready 113 pounds. His record, 21 wins, four losses, with 19 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the IBF super flyweight champion. Tonight, making his fourth defense of his title, introducing Julio Cesar Borboa. Once again, here's your referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Dr. James Jenkins. Tell them to see the mouthpieces. Okay, get a ver lo, el, el, el okay. You tell the gentleman both of them to obey my commands. Okay, here. This is low blow beneath here. Debajo de esto es, es para abajo, eh? Debajo de acá es right? bajo. Trunks okay. high, low blow here. Okay. Aquí, mm -hmm. sí. Aquí yeah, arriba, okay. Exactamente, señor. Thank you. Okay. Shake hands. All right, the tail of the tape of these little guys. Barboa, the champion, is 5'3". Roman is an inch shorter, a pound heavier, two years older, and, of course, the champion with two inches advantage in the reach department. It's the IBF super flyweight title that uh, Barboa has, and the only difference between their rules and that of California is that uh, the IBF says you can't be saved by the bell in any round. California says you can be saved by the bell in the final round of only. Other than that, the rules and regulations are the same. Blue and white seem to be the colors in vogue here tonight. In mostly white, trimmed in blue, is the champion Barboa. In the white and blue stripes, we have Jorge Luis Roman. You know, Tom, I find the weights almost unbelievable. Roman has fought his entire career practically at, at the 108 to 110 pound uh, class. He's up six. <laughs> and, and he weighs heavier weight tonight than Borboa. Yep. And in fact, he got he got a weight concession. You know, the limit on this uh, in this weight division is 115 pounds. But in order to get the fight, he had the champion signed for 114. And as it turned out, Borboa didn't even need the 114. He was down to 113. Yep. Borboa, of course, is. Um, a study in perseverance, not that his record of 21-4 with 19 knockouts, which leads you, lead you to believe he's anything but a champion, but there was a time when he couldn't go four rounds, much less six, and was his career was just about in the ash can. Suddenly resurrected, and uh, he's really come on now, not only to be the champion, to be one of the best fighters in the, in the world. Yeah, and maybe the fastest improving fighter in the world, Tom. His story is just incredible. His career appeared to be over. His manager, after a loss, left him at the gym, wouldn't even give him a ride home. He had to call a friend to come get him. That's how bad things were for a time, but Borboa 
the top of his game in the top of his division. He's in the white trimmed in blue. The fight that Tom is referring to is when he was knocked out in three rounds by Famacito Gomez, in which he was knocked down four times in just three rounds. Took a year off from boxing after that, moved here to Los Angeles, hooked up with Abdulio Munoz, and since then it's been kind of a different story. It has indeed, if you consider a world title and a record of 21 and 4. He um, is uh, reportedly a slow starter. But once he gets his act together and gets himself in gear, why, he's uh, he is something else again. So we'll wait and see. Roman, of course, is another guy who is very surprised to be in the ring here tonight, I would think, quite frankly. Not that you go into the ring in any fight thinking you aren't going to win, but he went in against Scotty Olsen. What a night that was, Rich Morata. On the 19th, Olsen was in there because a good showing there was going to put him in against either Carvajal or Gonzalez. Well, that's all Olsen was talking about all week during the press conferences and everything, talking about fighting Michael Carvajal. He was assuming a Carvajal was victory beat over Gonzalez, Chiquita, yeah. and he was assuming he was going to win, and he was wrong on both counts. Yeah. He broke his right hand. It was a terrible night for him. In fact, uh, from about the fifth round on, he never threw or seldom threw a right hand and was in big trouble all the while and yet uh, lost a, uh, a decision to uh, Roman. Uh, incidentally, a lot of people didn't think, despite the broken hand, that Roman won it. Our top contenders are brought to you by Takati. The 115-pound IBF top 10 world rankings are, you see the champion, Julio Cesar Borboa. You don't see on that list the name of Jorge Luis Ramon. Ramon, I should say, he's not there. But you see Marco Antonio Barrera, what a fighter he is. He's listed as 10th, Ramon is. Uh, excuse me, listed as 11th in the world rankings for the IBF. But the he's number getting two a title guy. shot here tonight. The number two guy that you saw there, Carol Tom. Gray. Robert Quiroga oh. is the guy that uh, Borboa relieved of the championship and, and what was just a, an absolutely startling upset. And he stopped him in 12 rounds. This one is scheduled for 12, of course. Dr. James Jen Ken is the uh, third man in the ring. And out they come for round two. Roman in the uh, candy striped trunks in the white and blue, the champion. Borboa. Borboa's last fight, Tom, was back in November as he knocked out Rolando Pasqua in five rounds. Pasqua, you'll recall, the guy who defeated Chiquita Gonzalez, knocked him out in this very forum ring right. to win a championship. Speaking of upsets, <laughs> young man from the Philippines that no one gave any credence or credibility to, and bang, all of a sudden he's the champion. Make no mistake about it, Borboa's beating quality guys. Putting that left to work, Tom, that uh, jab to work. Roman, one thing I like about Roman, you know, he works hard all the time, but he has a way of going with his combinations first to the body and then bringing them up to the head. He did that often in the second half of the fight against Scotty Olsen. Hit one, two, three punches to the body, and then boom, finish it off with a shot to the head. He's got a good set of whiskers. He is uh, tough to discourage out there. He works hard in the ring. And I think, um, knowing the significance of this title fight tonight, he is probably well prepared to go the 12. He was against Olsen in a 10 round go. And I think he is uh, very much mentally set to go 12 rounds and physically too. Whether or not the champion will have something to say about it is of course uh, yet to be seen. Arboa starting slow is a tough customer. And once he gets organized he is really Busy. And he's landed some pretty good lead right hands there. Yeah, nice shots from long range from Borboa. Roman wants to fight inside, but look at how Borboa keeps him outside there, Tom. Keeps him right on the edge of that jab and then ducks under a shot back the other way. Nice work. These guys are a 5-3 and 5-2. I know they look bigger than that, and I tell you, Borboa really looks well set up. He's broad-shouldered. His punches seem to come in straight lines. Uh, shortest route, of course, you know, to... One point to the other, a nice straight line shot, and he throws punches in that vein. That looks like a good fighter, well schooled, and of course he's the champion. And I'm sure enjoys being called the champion. And apparently a headbutt yeah. there. Tom, while you mentioned Roman's good set of whiskers, and he does have a good chin, unfortunately he does not have tough skin. He and cuts, he cuts a lot. Yeah. 
He's been stopped, uh, I believe, five or four times on cuts. And in fact, he was bleeding heavily in that fight with Scotty also. Yep. But he does have a stick to itiveness about him. He seems to persevere, and more often than not, he prevails. And again, he looks at Dr. James Jenkins saying, You know, we're banging heads in here. We'll be back to see about round number three after we see about this. We were talking earlier about cut men. You're looking at the backside of one of the very best in this business, Chuck Bodak. And of course, uh, getting cut or suffering from cuts, Roman is uh, susceptible to it. Headbutts may play an important part in this one. There they bang heads. And uh, Borboa, the champion, rubbing it uh, his. But we understand there's a cut under the eye. To the right eye, Tom. Of Roman. I asked Dr. James Jen Kin, uh, and I gestured over to him, was it, was it the headbutt that was, resulted in the cut? And he said yes. But Chuck Bodak, and it's above the eye top, looks to be in a bad yeah. spot. Yeah. Uh, Chuck Bodak may be the most important guy in the arena right now. That's right. Well, I think um, certainly anybody that is involved in this business, uh, fighting for a title to be sure, doesn't have a cut man of the quality of a Bodak or whomever is missing a real bet. Yeah, I can't imagine what you're referring to. Yes, you can. <laughs> I, I just find that that fight, and I don't mean to denigrate the talents of Moore, which are considerable to be sure, and the man is uh, the heavyweight champion of the world, but for the life of me, and I think Holyfield's a great human being. I just don't understand his rationale for some of the things he did or did not do, but we well, digress. Well, here in this fight now, Tom Roman is bleeding heavily now from that right eye, and that's going to be a real factor here. Just in a very bad spot, and Borboa is just going to try to work him over here. Borboa is really a good technician in the ring. I like the way he fights. Body and head, moves side to side, mixes it up real well. Roman uh, with the cut over the right eye. We're in round number three. Borboa, the champion. White trunks trimmed in blue. He's on the left of your screen. The candy striped trunks on Jorge Luis Roman. Tough little guy. Great chin. Doesn't Borboa have a strong upper body for a Yes, guy he does. Yeah, that, yeah, broad shouldered and he's a real little punching machine too, Rich Morata. And he throws him right up. That left hand just comes out rapier quick bang oh, bang and look at those combinations that was a five punch combination and they all landed really throws one at a time Tom unless he's dipping and throwing the body shot and the blood flows rather copiously now down the right side of the face of Jorge Luis Ramon the Ramon the uh, challenger of course this ruins Ramon's game plan because he's looking to get inside and to force an inside fight now he finds himself bagging away trying to protect the eye and catching almost everything at long range that more bullet throws at him. That looks like a nasty cut. Yep. See what Chuck Bodak can do with it between rounds here. This is round number three. IBF super flyweight title. These men came in at 113 and 114. Nice combination by the champion Borboa. Who in this the third round has really picked up the tempo. That's the end of round number three. And it'll be a feverish between rounds for Chuck Bodak and company in Roman's corner. We may have the doctor back in to take another look. No, they're not coming back in. Carnes was in a while ago. Look that. Uh, now he's got a cut over the right eye as well here. It looks yep. like left eye as well now, Tom. Two cuts. Navina. Now the doctor is approaching the corner over there. You'll see Carnes. Well, I would, such a crowd over there. He is. I wouldn't think this could last too much longer, Tom. Not with two cuts. Now he's got one over each eye. I mean, he's not going to be able to favor one side or the other here. But I tell you, the best thing he's got going for him is Bojack, the guy who's working on those eyes. They're, they're both gashes. Look at that right oh, eye cut. Yeah. That's a wide yeah. open cut. Yeah. I don't think, oh boy, I don't think he's, yeah, they're going to let it go. Going to let it go another round here, please. Now that's, that's two cuts and two tough spots. Boy, unbelievable. Jorge Luis 
Stroman cut over each eye in the eyelid under the eyebrow in perhaps the most vexing of all spots for a fighter. The ironic thing about this matchup, and Tom referred to it uh, in our opening remarks tonight, is the fact that Roman, the brother of a, a really great champion, uh, Gilberto Roman, who made 13 successful title defenses, four or five of them in this ring right here at the forum, was the idol of, of uh, Barboa. Julio Cesar Barboa, as Barboa was growing up. That's who he idolized, and here he is in with the brother. Yeah, indeed, uh, like politics, why boxing can make for strange bedfellows as well. Nice combinations and a pressure. Good, solid right hand by Ramon, who may be trying to catch lightning in a bottle, Rich. Well, why not? He probably feels his time is running out too, Tom, and he's going out there. And he has caught Borboa with two very clean and hard shots. And yet Borboa has landed some solid in return. And uh, again, the blood now beginning to flow from the cut uh, on the right eye of Ramon. Ramon. Boy, those are great combinations by the champion. Impressive stuff. Borboa, that's about five in a row, unanswered, thrown by Borboa. Just rarely throws one at a time. <coughs> Roman bleeding. Cuts over both eyes, in the eyelids of both eyes. This is the fourth title defense for Borboa since he won the title with that stunning upset over Kiroga. And look at how he mixes it up, body and then to the head, and then ducks. That's yep. a, at the fourth or fifth time that he's ducked over shots. Coming up top. Ramon hit him with two or three solid shots. As good as he's thrown up when he had him up against the ropes. But the champion took him in stride. Firing back leads a, an overhand right. Lands a solid shot. And there's another. Remember, Ramon is basically stepping up two weight classes. He was a 108 pounder. That's when he fought Scotty Orson. And not only did he jump up past the junior fly, but past the fly weight. And he's caught a left back. hand and a right. And down he goes on his knees. Count is at three, he's up at four. Too many shots, Tom, just too many shots there. And of course, blood's pouring down his face. They're gonna stop it for a moment, they guess the doctor to come in and take a look. Dr. Robert Carr says He stopped it, it's done. In the fourth round, Julio Cesar Borbola picks up his fourth title defense, his record 22 and four, with 20 knockouts now. Whoever told this kid he shouldn't be champion, huh? <laughs> what a magnificent little fighting machine he is. At 113 pounds, we'll come back and get the official call and maybe a word from the champion. We'll continue in a moment. So Cesar Borboa, Rocky. There he is, his fifth title defense. His record goes to a sparkling 22 and four and 20 knockouts. And you talk about no wasted motion. And to the point punching, this kid's got it all, Rich Morata. And Jimmy Lennon Jr. has got the official call as this fight was stopped in the fourth round. Jimmy, if you will. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 30 seconds. In round number four, the referee in charge, Dr. James Jankin, stops the contest on advice of ringside physician, Dr. Robert Carnes, the winner by way of technical knockout, and still the IBF super flyweight champion, Julio Cesar Navajo Borboa. Borboa, the champion, up on the shoulders of uh, his corner people. And uh, what a fine display he put on tonight. Whoever told this kid he shouldn't be champion missed the boat. This kid uh, persevered, prevailed, and here he is, 22 and 4. Can he fight? He is very, very accurate, Tom. He's a very talented fighter, and he looks to me to have all of the attributes that a champion needs to reign for a long time. That was one impressive performance. There's the vanquish. Jorge Roman who gave it a tough fight, but you know, we as we mentioned just before it happened, that thin skin that he's got unfortunately works against him. That's right, he's got a jaw. If his skin was as tough as that jaw of his, he'd still be fighting. Fernando Paramo of La Pinion is up there with the champion. Let's go to the ring. Julio, you must be really satisfied with this performance. Tienes que estar muy contento con esta esta demostración. Claro que sí. Este Roman 
Lamentablemente lo corté, pero me hubiera gustado que hubiera visto más la gente, que hubiera apretado más Román, me hubiera metido en, en, en aprietos. Quiso hacerlo, pero luego le, le paré. He says that unfortunately, uh, Roman was cut right away. He wanted to be pressed. He wanted to do a better job. And uh, he says that uh, luckily, he, 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 the, the fight stopped and uh, he just wiped them out. Uh, what happens to you now? Where do you go from here? ¿Qué pasa de ahora? ¿A dónde vas de aquí? Pues vamos a esperar, seguir entrenando, meternos al gimnasio de nuevo para nuevamente hacer una defensa. Yo creo que para el mayo. He says he's going to go right back to the ring, go back to training, and, ho and hopefully make uh, another defense in... Uh